welcome to Jesus is Lord. We encourage you to stand on God's word through all circumstances. Remember, things only work together for our good when we fellowship with Jesus daily. Welcome, Dr. Sherlock Bally. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a shout of hallelujah. Hallelujah! hallelujah. <clears throat> I'd like my sister in the back to add Revelation chapter 3 verse 7 to that uh, list I gave you. Now, now, now let me tell you what's happening to me tonight. <laughs> I want to finish what I started last night on the breath of God. Uh, it's an eight point message. I covered one point. And then I'd like to speak to you on the signs of the last generation, Amen. which I really want to do tomorrow night because I'll be talking about COVID-19 tomorrow night from the Word of God. You will be astonished. Amen. If you think that this has caught God by surprise, you are dead wrong. That's right. God either plans it or permits it. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Yeah. Huh? That's Amen. Right. Either plans it or permits that's it. Right. So whatever happens, He has a plan. Amen. Amen. That's right. Now, if the well, devil started it, you see, Nebuchadnezzar That's built right. a furnace. Yes. Come on. Come on. That's right. <laughs> That's right. But Nebuchadnezzar had no clue that God wanted to display his power Amen. for Nebuchadnezzar to Woo. see Glory. with three Hebrew boys. Oh. But in order to do that, to elevate them, oh. he had to allow Nebuchadnezzar to think he was going to kill him. Right. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Come on. But when the, the fire started, a fourth man stepped into the furnace. <laughs> And Nebuchadnezzar lost power over the furnace he built. Yes, right, yes, right. So sometimes God doesn't plan it. He permits it. Yes. But in it, he brings his glory. Oh, yes. Can I get somebody yes. to say amen? Yes, amen? Because three Hebrew boys went from a furnace yeah. to the governorship of Babylon. Yes. Because God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to think amen. that he would build a furnace to kill him. Amen. <laughs> So whatever is happening in the world, God will bring something out of it for you. Yeah. Now, the third thing that's happening to me right now is I want to talk about where America is and our president. Mm. Yes. Amen. Yeah. So I have three full messages blowing up inside of me. <laughs> and I can only give you one. So guess which one I'm going with? Our president. And this country. Praise hmm? Praise That's where I'm going. Now tomorrow, I'll be speaking on signs of the last generation, fully PowerPoint, fully video, and we'll be talking about COVID-19. Trust me, you want to invite someone to be here, and you want yes. to be here too. Yes. But it's great to have you. Yes. So I'm going to go to Ezra chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, Revelation chapter 3, verse uh, 7, and then uh, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16. And uh, how about if we read all the scriptures we have to give you tonight and then we go when we go powerpoint we don't have to be going to and fro okay. yeah. huh is that right yes okay. Amen. all right okay so let's do this man we'll go one to uh zachariah 14 16 zachariah 8 23 then we'll go to ezra 1 1 and 2 then we'll go to revelation 3 7. is that okay amen and there's a popular scripture I won't even read, which is Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 45, 1. I, I, I won't read that, but uh, uh, I'll, I'll quote it as I go. So any way you want to go is fine. Any scripture you want to start with is fine. We will not go to signs of the last generation. We'll be going to the Feast of Tabernacles, okay? Very good, okay. So wh whichever one you want to put up is fine. Praise God. What I want to tell you is that you must keep believing that no matter what storm blows, Jesus has power over it. Amen. Amen. Huh? Yes. And out of the storm, he's going to bring the miracle. Yes. Yes. Ooh. yes. Uh, oh, by the way, the church was getting too content and too yeah. smug mm -hmm. and too prosperous. Mm -hmm. It had to be shaken. That's right. Now, you've got to hear this tomorrow. Okay, let's read. Read. And it shall, it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of the nation, somebody say nations. nations. Say it one more time. Nations. So the first prophecy is to who? The nation. Good. Which came against? Jerusalem. So the, the second prophecy is about what? 
coming against Jerusalem. Say it again. Jerusalem. Okay, next. Shall, shall even go up from year to year to worship. So the third prophecy is that they will go to worship. Next. The Lord of hosts and to keep So the fourth prophecy is about what? Tabernacle. Keeping the Feast of First prophecy is about Nation. Second Jerusalem. Against Jerusalem. Third Worship the King Next Feast of Tabernacle. Remember that I'm going to show you those four came to pass uh, Zechariah 8.23 This is stunning This one Hallelujah Now I'm going to enjoy this tonight because before Mr. Trump, our president, was voted into office, I was invited to speak to a group of leaders in Oklahoma, and it was put on record. And what I told them is what I'm going to tell you tonight. Just a few, a couple of the points. Astonishing stuff. Read. Please. The say the Lord God of hosts. In those days, it should not pass that. Ten minutes. Stop. Stop. Say it again. Ten, Ten men. men. Now remember that. Ten men. Ten men. Ten men. Alright. Read. Out of all, out of all the languages of the nation shall, shall take, take hold. Even, even shall, shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew. Jew. Say, we, we will go with you, for we, for we have heard that God is with you. Wow. How many? Ten. Ten men. Remember that. I'm going to show you what the ten men are. Okay. Any anyone you want to go to? Okay, Ezra. Good. You're good. Now let me tell you. I've preached to hundreds of thousands and to twenty. When I get done tonight, pastor is going to have to call in the painter. Because I'm gonna preach the paint off that wall. <laughs> Amen. 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 Watch me burn. Next. Now in the first year, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stir up the spirit. No, no, hold on. If God can stir up an unsaved, un, uncovenanted, uh, uh, a worshiper of Marduk, idolater, don't you think he can stir up some dead church people? Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That, somebody should have said amen right there. Amen. And if you think that all church people are going to heaven, no. you haven't read about the virgins, have you? Yes, yeah, we have. Come on. Yes, we have. Mm. Fools virgins. Mm. So realize that going to a garage will make you a car. That's right. That's right. Going to an oven will make you chocolate cake. That's Going into a bar don't make you a horse. Yes. And sitting in church surely don't make you a Christian. That's right. That's right. It's a That's matter right. of the heart. That's right. That's right. Some people are going to miss heaven by 12 inches. The space from their head to the heart. Information and transformation. That's why 12 inches is called the ruler. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought that was good. I, that was good. Now in the first The Lord stood up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia. That he might. Be a made a proclamation through all his kingdom and put it in writing. Now wait. Yeah. I'm going to show you why. Next verse. Read. Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia. The Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth. And he had charged me to build him, and this word is temple. In Jerusalem. Yeah. I see it. 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 Wow. I see it. Go ahead now. There is going to be a Jerusalem move before the coming of the Lord. God is going to use somebody to bring Jerusalem back to the center. Amen. Come on. So let's see what the Lord is saying. Amen. Father, thank you for our pastor, for the people that are here tonight. They came out, Lord, when many in the county are locked in because of the virus. They have come to hear from you. Do touch them specially today with a transforming word. Help us.
us to touch those that are so afraid. Save us, deliver us, fill us with your fullness, fill us with your wholeness, take us to your high place and anoint me to preach. And would somebody say amen? Amen. amen. Okay. Revelation chapter 3 verse 7. Okay. Watch this. Hallelujah. Now remember this. God charged an unsaved man to build a temple. Amen. God's resources are not restricted to the church. That's right. Come on, man. Oh, Come on now. Oh, oh, oh. That's right. Come on, that's right. I do not understand mm -hmm. how Muslim people can build a $10 million mosque, cash, six months, and if we have to buy a pulpit, we have to go junking for Jesus. That's right. And have a garage sale. Come on. You never see the Muslims having a junking for Allah. No. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that didn't go down too good. <laughs> Read. And to the angel, this word is angelos, or to the messenger or the pastor. So it is appropriate to call her the angel of this church. Uh, say that. This is astonishing. Say that. I'm going to show you how that was fulfilled. Say that. Say it. Write these things, saith he that is holy, and he that is true. He that hath the I'm going to show you what that is. He that openeth and no man shutteth. So here we are today. Almighty God has made some declarations in his word that are powerful and that are glorious. And may I say to you, uh, the, the devil never has the last say in anything that pertains to the kingdom of God. The devil never has the first say. And he is, he is the alpha. My father is the alpha and the omega and all the in between. So I want you to know that your life isn't defined by the incidental things that happens around you. It is defined by the power of the word of God. Somebody should say, a loud hallelujah to that one because, because in a time when everything is unsettled his word is eternally settled in the heaven so I am living with a settling atmosphere in my life it is settled amen hallelujah thank you thank you so let us begin is everybody ready amen uh, okay let us go to, uh, uh, the Bible says in Zechariah 14, 17, you heard what it said, that what? That the, the, the first prophecy had to do with the nations. The second prophecy had to do with what? Worship. The third had to do with against Jerusalem. And the fourth had to do with what? The Feast of Tabernacles. So let me tell you what happened. Israel has just put out in the last few months a statistic. And that is, in the year to 2017, in all the years that Israel was alive, Israel became a place of assembly and a house of prayer and a house of worship for Jews and non-Jews as prophesied in this scripture more than any year in Israeli history. Wow. Tourism skyrocketed by 25%. 5.8% billion dollars came in because of tourists coming in. There is no nation in the world that had 25% increase in tourism, including America, except that desert piece of land called the nation of Israel, $5.8 billion. You know what that means? That means the situation doesn't have to be ideal for God to prosper you and for God to bless you and for God to elevate you. In the midst of a desert, God has the power to bring blessing and breakthrough and outpouring. Yes, yes. God, I oh, wish I yes. had somebody to believe that. Yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. So I want to show you. You do know what happened when President Donald Trump did what? Major Moved yep. the, the embassy, embassy to Jerusalem. The last move is a move with Jerusalem. Jerusalem. God will use somebody to bring that into focus. Yeah. And I'm happy to announce to you that out of all the presidents, Democrats and Republicans, God used Donald J. Trump. Yes, he did. Yes. Now you do know 
that every president since 1993 had the congressional authority to move the embassy. Yes. In fact, it was called the Jerusalem Embassy Act that empowered every president to move the embassy and gave them money to move it. But there was a waiver in the Jerusalem Embassy Act that said, if you did not want to move it, you could sign the waiver and we would delay it for six months. Every president, Republican and Democrat, signed the waiver until I got you. In human history, church history, Jewish history, as doing four things no other president has done. Number one, he's moved the embassy to Jerusalem. Number two, he's the only sitting president that ever laid his hand on the Wailing Wall. Number three, he set up the Golan Heights as Israeli territory that is sovereign. Number three, he, number, three number four, he talked about the settlements and authorized the settlements. So, those of you that are here that want prophetic power, let it be known that our president goes down in history as the only one to do four things. And somebody should be very happy about that. Because from the moment Jerusalem housed the embassy, Abrahamic blessings broke out on this country to the tune of trillions of dollars. Can I ask you a question? How do you think we have the money to give everybody, family, a thousand dollars. Where do you think the money is coming from? Do you know the money that has been added to the stock market in the last three and a half years? Trillions of dollars because of the policy of Mr. Trump. You bless Israel, God will bless you. Almighty God knew that a time of trial was coming on America. Three and a half years of unparalleled prosperity. Oh my God. That's why the country is not going to sink. Because now we have the money. God knew. God knew that COVID was coming. So what did he do? He empowered a man that doesn't care a flip about any man. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. No man. That's right. He'll do what he wants. He feels it's right. It is for the church. It is for the Christian. It's for the Jew. I will do it. If you don't like it, love it. That's right. Too bad. That's right. People tell me, eh, Mr. Valley, you don't understand. He had Stormy. He had that woman Stormy. Stormy blew in. Stormy blew out. <laughs> but he ain't moral enough. You fail to realize the greatest king of Israel was an immoral killer. Yes, he was. Come on. Yes. Peeping at the top of the roof when he was should be fighting. Yeah. Killing a lie. But God, he said, I will not hide, I will confess, and I will acknowledge. He bowed before the Lord. God wiped his slate and made him the greatest king that Israel ever had. And I'll show you something. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. I'll show you. Preach! I'll show you. Preach and it will. Because see, you got to understand, if God could cause a donkey to talk to a prophet, you qualify. Amen. 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 Except, except he didn't call it a donkey. Yeah, no, he called it an A double S. No, you can't say the word because it's a bad word, but it's in the Bible. So if it's in the Bible, I can say it. Right. Amen. Some people won't say the word ass, but they gossip. Yes, there you go, girl. Huh? So if God can anoint an ass to talk to a pro prophet, right. then. Any old ass can talk. Amen. Come on. Amen, bro. Right. Oh, God. It doesn't tell you about the ass. It tells you about the supernatural power of Almighty God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. God doesn't need much to do what he is doing. God has everything. He will take your nothingness, my Lord. And make you so when Mr. Trump moved the embassy, the nations of the world rose up. Amen. You remember what they said? Number one, you've pulled the pin to the grenade. Number two, you've begun Armageddon. Number three, the peace deal is over. I want to know what peace deal. <laughs> it's a, well, I call it the roadmap to hell. Huh? Another one said, we can never go back. Guess what happened? Nothing. You know why? 
All those people around Israel that were talking all that nonsense knew if any one of them stepped over the border, they'd hear four words, boom, boom, shakalaka, and they would be shellacked. Oh, Israel, oh, Israel, sweet Israel, God covenanted with Israel. Do you know, out of the, hundred, of the 200 nations in the world, a census was now put out that Israel, out of the 200, is number eight in power. Mm. Number eight wow. in the world. Amen. Oh, that should make somebody be happy. Because if God can take those desert warriors and make them number eight in the entire world when they are surrounded by 22 enemies that want to kill them every day, with the United Nations sanctioning them every week, with every nation in the world except eight against them, and God can elevate them, then God has the power to reach into your life your heart, your family, your church, your job, your business, and bring blessing. I wish I had somebody here that believed that right now that God could walk in to the craziness that's going on in our world and bring blessing for you and breakthrough for you and elevation for you tonight. Amen. 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 If you believe it, would you give him a shout of hallelujah? Hallelujah! God well, knew that our country would need at least one trillion dollars. So he caused the banks to be more capitalized and have more liquidity now than ever in history. You know what the banks are doing for people? Do you know? They are putting off their car payments up to three months wow. and tagging it on to the end of the note. Yes. Huh? Yes. Oh my. I don't know. I don't know if you know how God has prepared this country. I know it's hard. I know things are going on, but God has prepared. Amen. Oh, wow. Now, I can, I can take Well, yeah. All right. But all of this would happen around what time? The feast, feast, feast of tabernacles. Tabernacles. they would come up to, number one, it would be against Jerusalem. Number two, they would be the nations. Has that come to pass? Yeah. No. Yeah, yes, yes, with all of this going on. Number three, okay. it would have to come to the what? The city of? Jerusalem. Around the what? Feast of? Tabernacles. Please go to the PowerPoint. Please. Sure, sure, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, so what I'm trying to show you is that prophetically, there is no doubt that the Almighty God has raised up this man to be in office at this time. Now, I know, do I like the Twitter? Not really. Do I like some of the words? Not really. Do I wish that there are times when our president could be a little more diplomatic? Uh-huh. But we don't need a Sunday school teacher up there. Thank you. We need a man that will take the bull by the horns and declare, look, this is what we want and this is what is going to happen. Now, I'm going to show you this in the Word of God. I'm going to show you this in the Word of God. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is that our country is in one of the most unbelievable places we've ever been. And I want to declare to you today that you get to have a front row seat to all that is happening in our world right now. Because as America goes, so goes the world. Hallelujah. People aren't wanting to migrate to China. People aren't wanting to migrate to Japan. They're still coming to America. That's right. Now, my first book, I've authored 13. My first book was published around 911. This book got me into Capitol Hill to have a meeting in the congressional dining room because a senator's wife, a congressman's wife, read it and said, it's the best book on America she read. Would you come to the congressional dining room? I went. Uh, uh, 911, which was 19 years ago, I wrote something in here that has come to pass in this administration. I'm going to read it to you in just a little while. Because God, how many of you know that God has your back? Yes. Yes. Huh? Yes. How many of you know God has your back? Hallelujah. 
when Amen. people tell you that there's no armor for the back, they are wrong. Because the Bible says, the glory is my re reward. Amen. The glory is behind me. Amen. The glory is in front of me. Now, I propose to show you in the Feast of Tabernacles that is coming up. I propose to show you a miracle that has happened. Oh, by the way. Even though Israel's tourism increased by 25% in 2017, it increased by 32% in 2019. Wow. Mm. Hallelujah. Huh? No, uh, uh, tabernacles. Yeah. Okay, no trouble. That's no trouble. Okay. How many of you have ever heard about someone, uh, uh, an organization called the Sanhedrin? Yeah. Yes. Have you ever heard of the Sanhedrin? Yes. 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 It was effective in the time of the Lord. Right. Mm -hmm. Huh? The closer we get to the rebuilding of the temple is the more important it will be to have a Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin is extremely important. It was a governing body for the civil and tribunal matters and also the oversight of the temple. But in 453 BC, the Sanhedrin went out of existence. But the closer you get to the coming of the Lord and the rebuilding of the third temple and the coming of the Messiah, the Sanhedrin would have to be reconvened. I am happy to announce to you that in 2009, the Sanhedrin was reconvened. Hallelujah. So let's go. What, folks, I have so much information to give you. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm going to try. What's that? That's an aerial view of Jerusalem. Right. This is the Dome of the Rock. Right. That is a cupola. Uh, 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 and then one over here called the Dome of the Tablets. This is the Kedron Valley. That here is where they built the graves. That is the Eastern Gate. The, uh, Suleiman the Magnificent built all the graves here at the Eastern Gate because they know Messiah would come. They built the graveyard because they believe that a priest cannot walk in an unwalled cemetery. That is why the Bible says when Jesus comes on the Mount of Olives, which is on, through the Kedron Valley, way over here, when he comes, the Bible says, and put his foot down, there'll be an earthquake. So when there's an earthquake, ain't going to be no cemetery. Amen. I got you. That should make a Baptist be happy. Hallelujah. Next. What did the Bible say that all these prophecies will take place around what? Look at that. That is a hundred thousand people at the Wailing Wall. Look at this. Next. Next. All of that took place around the time of the Feast of Tabernacles. And you have lived to see it, but that's not all. Next. You have lived to see Jerusalem be launched into the limelight. Hallelujah. Watch this. They are saying that the COVID and the economy will be a V. Which means the economy is going to be impacted. It doesn't mean we have less money. The stock market is 85% emotion and 15% reality. Huh? It means as it goes down, rapidly. It will come back up. All right. How many of you have heard the prophecy of Isaiah 45 1. Yes. Right. Yeah. It's about King. Yeah, so. Everybody has heard about it. Right? Mm. A lot of people. Mm -hmm. We've paralleled that to President Trump. Why? Because Isaiah is the governmental book, because the government shall be upon his shoulders. And Isaiah 45 is the governmental chapter. So to parallel prophecy, uh, it had to be the 45th president. Yeah. What do you do? What did Cyrus do? He let them go from Babylonian captivity after 70 years. Thus, the embassy was moved in the 70th year of Israel's independence. Cyrus gave them money to build the, the temple, but also to build the wall. So there would be a temple and a wall. But Brother Bally, I don't like building a wall. You can't go to heaven then because heaven has a wall. 
Yes, it does. Read the book of Revelation. Wow, Jasper. You never want to argue with a preacher? <laughs> Watch this. Not only does it have a wall, hell has open borders. That's right. Yeah. That's true. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So actually, the parallel, but it's more than that. Next, let me show you. You got to hear this. The Sanhedrin is reestablished, so that means the temple is going to be built soon. Next, there he is. Yeah, I got that picture. He's the only president in American history ever to put his. You know what that means? It authenticated Jerusalem as the capital. How many of you know there's a Washington, D.C.? And there's a Jerusalem, D.C.? Washington, D.C.? District of? Columbia. Jerusalem, D.C.? David's capital. Mm -hmm. D.C. <laughs> there he is. The only one. Only one. That's right. Next. You know this. It's the coin that was made by the Temple Institute and the Sanhedrin, putting Mr. Trump and Cyrus together. This was not done by the Pentecostals. This was done by the Temple Institute that is not Messianic. They don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Huh? That's nice. You have lived to see that. Next. Okay, I want to stop. Who is he? Russia. Putin. 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 What's the, how do you like to have a name like that? <laughs> how about that? What's that? Wall. wall. Which wall? Wailing wall. It's the wailing wall. Right. And I want to show you how that is connected to Ezra 1, 1 and 2. God said, I would cause a king that did not know me, not a Jew, idolater, worshiper of Marduk, to build my... My temple. And he did. He gave the money. Well, let me show you this. This is so powerful. The Sanhedrin sent a letter to Mr. Putin and President Trump. Can I read the first paragraph? Dear President Putin, we are sending this letter to remind you of the biblically mandated role for non-Jewish kings to help us rebuild our temple. <laughs> In other words, send your money. Now, why is he at the wedding? See, this is the parallel to Ezra 1, 1 and 2. What? Why is he there? Look what he said. He maintains a deep, Putin maintains a deep relationship with Russian Jews, Israeli leaders. Uh, I have supported the founding of the Jewish Museum and Tolerance Center in Moscow. He said the wall gives me a special feeling. I do not care if what he's saying is truth or false. The fact is, he's here. That's right. That's right. Wow. And you have lived to see it. Okay. Remember what I told you about 10 men? Yes. Remember? Yeah. 10. That 10 will do what? Go. Hold the, the skirt. You know what the skirt is? Your talit. I will hold the skirt of him who is the Jew and said, I have heard that God is with you. I will follow you to Jerusalem. Right. Now watch. Are you ready for this one? You know, I often wondered why my mother would call an Indian boy Sherlock. Yeah, investigate. Ah. <laughs> you, you, you're on. When Mr. Trump, President Trump, moved the embassy, the following nations began to move. Watch. Slovakia, Paraguay, Australia, Honduras, Guatemala, Austria, Romania, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, and Brazil. Wow, that's the wow. And you have lived to see it.
Can somebody give the Lord a shout of hallelujah? Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Lord. Okay. So I want to tell you, at three and a half years ago, when they asked me to come and do an analysis of the presidency and what was going to happen, what I told them. I have it written here, and I'm going to tell you. It's extremely important. The Lord spoke to me I, I, just before the election. I said, Father, could you please show me? And these were his words to me. No, I am not smart enough to put this together. He said, the time of Saul is over. David has come. Okay. What was the time of Saul? The former. Oh, yes. The, yeah, the former. Yes, before. Yes. Uh, Saul was head and shoulders above everybody else. Remember the former. Next, his leadership was by appearance. Next, he disobeyed God. In former administrations, whose name I will not call, Benjamin Netanyahu was never ever invited to come to America. When Mr. Trump came into power, four times. Next, no one sought the Lord in the time of Saul's administration. Next, he consulted with a wrong spirit. Saul did. Yes, he did. And another one did. <coughs> another spirit of another religion. Yes. And God said, that time is over. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you Lord. Thank now, hold on. David. So Samuel comes to anoint the king. David is where? Huh? Yeah. So all the boys that had the... Yes. Were called up. Samuel said... Do you have any more? Yeah, I've got a smelly fella. The youngest. She, bring him. The eighth son was never considered. Now remember my words. The eighth son was never considered. All the others were. He was a sheep tender. He didn't look like it. He didn't talk like a politician. He wasn't an experienced politician. But he was successful at what he did. Oh. Amen. Amen. Yes. Come on now. Right. Yeah. Come on. Right. Wow. Yep. 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 I choose you. Please listen to me. I'm going to show you what David did. From the moment David became king, riots broke out all over Israel. That's right. That's right. Do you remember what happened yeah. when our president became president? Yes. Yes. Riots yes. broke out. That's right. do, do you remember? Come on, somebody. Do you remember? Because I've got something to show you. I feel the Holy Ghost on me right now. That's it. He's not that our president. Yeah. Hear this? He... he he, he had a foreign policy, David, that had to do with the Philistines and the Mo and Syria. Mm -hmm. When Mr. Trump came into power, the problem was Hamas or the Philistines and Syria. Right. Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen. Oh, wait, wait. That was his foreign policy. Domestically, this is what he said. We are going to take Jerusalem back and make Jerusalem great again. Amen. David. David. David did that. Yeah. Number two. We will fortify and protect yeah. Jerusalem. Yeah. Number three. I'm going to bring the ark back. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to place emphasis on the people of God. Has our president did that? Yeah. Make America great again. Yeah. Put Jerusalem at the forefront once again. Yeah. Fortify and protect. And I will bless the church. Amen. Bring the ark back. Yes. Now hold on. I'm not done yet. Next he said, I will heal the land. David said, I will heal the land and extend the empire. Is America more respected today? Yes. 
I'm, no, I'm asking, yeah. Is America more respected today? Yes. Our military is respected. Our economy is respected. Our politic is respected. Yes. That is why business... Uh, let, let me not go there yet. Hear what he said. David, I'm going to bring the money back to Jerusalem. Has the money begun to come back to America? Yes. Yes. From Mexico? Right. $200 billion a year from China? Mm -hmm. Now wait. He established Jerusalem as the religious center. Yes. Yeah. I want you to hear this. He considered the rights of his subjects and sought after their happiness and did not oppress them to bring taxes. Amen. He reduced it. Mm -hmm. Folks, I'm asking you a question. Are you seeing something? Yes. 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 Parallel. But I have another one for you. It took him seven and a half years to bring Judah and Jerusalem together. Not four. This is a two-term king. Yep. Oh, a two-term so, president. Yep, yep. Right. Yep. I want to read something to you, and then I want to go to a few other things. Because of what I felt about the election, I followed the campaign fairly closely. These words came out of Mr. Trump's mouth. Number one, I am a lifetime supporter of the nation of Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Yes. And he has proved it. Yes. Yes. I wish I could tell you some stuff, but I can't. <laughs> Number two, I'm quoting him. I will undo the Iran deal. Yep. And he did. Yep. Help me. And he, he did. And the Paris. Next. I will veto any attempt by the UN to impose itself on Israel. It is. Yes, it is. When I become president, the days of treating Israel like a second class citizen is over. Yes. There will, we will send a message to the world that there is no daylight between America and our most reliable ally, Israel. Amen. And he. I will meet Mr. Netanyahu immediately. Amen. I will move the embassy to Jerusalem, the Amen. eternal capital of Israel. Amen. And we have lived. Have you ever wondered why every time he was attacked by the 17, his numbers went up and theirs went down? Yes. Have you ever wondered why those who attacked him either went down or out? Have you ever wondered why he spent relatively little and won? Have you ever wondered why so many from all spectrums were united against him and now they are trying to stop him? Yes. Ever wondered why? The Randy Christ. <laughs> yes. Now, that sister brought up a very important point. Yeah. Yeah. The spirit that's coming against... That's our president is not natural. Right. That's right. The world hates the church, yes. Yes. hates the Jew, yes. hates the Christian, yes. and hates our God. Yes. The God that is in our Declaration of Independence several times yes. and cannot be taken out of it. Yes. The God that is in the Supreme Court on the Supreme Court door. The Ten Commandments. Yes. A picture behind the Supreme Court judge. Yes. The Ten Commandments. As you walk into the Supreme Court, there are ten people that are staring you in your face and Moses in the middle of it. And they can't take that. I had the privilege of going through Capitol Hill for five hours with a video camera. You would be astonished to know with a congressman what I saw. I saw God everywhere I turned. I saw scripture everywhere I turned. And because our country was built on God. And a, yeah. Come on now. Yeah. We are the only Judeo 
Christian nation in the world. Which means we have a secular form of government built on a religious scale of values. Where do you think marriage came from? The Old Testament. Where do you think a loving God came from? The Old Testament. Where do you think uh, a forgiving God came from? The Old Testament. Where do you think justice came from? The Old Testament. Our forefathers saw themselves as inheritors of the Hebrew Bible. That's the attack. It's the attack against God, yes. the church, the Jew, and the Bible. That's right. But I'm here to let you know we win. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Peter. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. I wish the church would stop talking about the negatives. That's right. Come on now. And begin speaking more about the positives. Yes. Amen. People are saying, well, I mean, I'm, I'm saving that for tomorrow night. I'm saving that for tomorrow night. Sherlock, where are we? I want you to hear this because this is astonishing. Somebody say, astonishing. Astonishing. Our president was 70 years, seven months, seven days old on the day of his inauguration in the Hebrew year 5777. Wow. Mm. A jubilee year. He's the only one ever to have a family member that was a convert, converted to Judaism. Ivanka. They are kosher. And, ooh, you got to hear this one. The key of David. Can we go back to that? Oh, wait, wait. Next slide, if you can. Good, next. Good, I'll forget all that. Go to, can you go back to Revelation 3, 7? Folks, what I'm trying to do today is to show you what has happened in the United States of America is supernatural. Right. Amen. It's not natural. You cannot be a David and go in the middle of 17 career politicians and whoop them. That's right. That's right. You can't. All right. So let me show you this. In my book, I said, The church is still being added to daily by the power of the Holy Spirit touching men's lives. America, you are standing at the door of revival. Revelation 3, 7 states, uh, and I went on to explain, I quoted Revelation 3, 7. I want to show you the power of Revelation 3, 7. I want to show you the power of what God is about to do in your lives through this pastor, through this ministry, through my life, and to those people who are remnant. How many of you are remnant amen. saints? Say amen. amen. Can I show you what a remnant saint is? A remnant saint. God never dealt with the institution. He always dealt with the remnant. It was one Moses, one Joshua, 70 elders, Paul, Peter, and then 70 of them, and, and, and then 120 of them. It was always the hidden Esther and the Deborah, always. Let me show you remnant. Somebody say remnant. remnant. Oh. When, when you are cutting, when you are, are, are putting carpet down, what do you have to do sometimes? Cut. And when you cut it, what is it called? Remnant. Okay, so the remnant is a result of being cut. Amen. Hey, Toto Bosaya. Huh? Amen. And sometimes you go into another place in the church and it needs a what? A piece of remnant. carpet and you use the remnant. The purpose of the remnant is to fit you in places where the hole can't fit. Right. Amen. Mm. Mm. Amen. God is getting ready to fit you in a place where the hole don't want to go. <laughs> oh, I thought that was really good. It is. Huh? It is. Okay, so we are going to go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, Lord. if we can. All right, no trouble. Somebody go to Revelation 3, 7 and read it for me, please, would you? How many of you are excited to be alive? Amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise How many of you are happy to be American today? Hallelujah. Give him a shout of hallelujah. hallelujah. You see, Osama made a mistake. He thought by pulling down the twin towers of our finance, he could destroy the spirit of America. What he did not know is the spirit of America doesn't dwell in a concrete building, but dwells in the heart of every American that is alive. And you cannot eradicate that. That is there. Stay. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody read Revelation 3 7, please. And lo, the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. The church of what? A key of what? David. It opens a door and shuts a door. Now, wait a minute. Could you explain to me how? The church of what? How in the world did President Trump win three states that were historically Democrat, and one of them was Pennsylvania... Philadelphia. That's right. <laughs> the 20 electoral votes needed to go over in the electoral college came from a Democrat state. That's right. Thank you, guys. That's why they want to change. Yes. Huh? What is the key of David? According to Isaiah 22 22, the key of David controls entry into the royal kingdom. Say, key of David. Key of David. In other words, you prohibit entry. You prohibit entry or you permit entry. You have control. Number two. The key of David is governmental authority. In the kingdom of God. Yes. Number three. Whoever has the key of David is the gatekeeper of the city. Amen. Number four. You control the treasury. I give now we know the Church of Philadelphia symbolizes the remnant church. How do we know? Read the chapter. That's the church that is raptured, taken out of the hour of tribulation. The church of Laodicea is spewed into the tribulation period. God vomits it out. So that's why I'm telling you, not everybody that says I'm a church member is going in the rapture. Exactly. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Yep. What are you given as a people? You are given governmental authority. Amen. Amen. You are given the key to prohibit or permit. You are given power and authority over everything in the city, but you are also given the key to the storehouse. Amen. Mm. Wow. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Well, Brother Bally, I have not experienced that key to the storehouse yet. That's okay, because God is first working in you, then through you. Once he's working in you, through you will catch up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The money will catch up. Yeah. Yeah. The last thing to come is the money. <laughs> God's just wanting to see how far you're going to go. And keep praising Him. Yeah. It bothers me as a servant of the Lord. To see the Muslims more faithful in giving than church people. You've got some stingy church people. Yes, you do. Yes. The greatest worship you can give is your money. Right. You know why? It represents a chunk of your life. Yes. You can hallelujah all you want. If you ain't a giver, you ain't a worshiper. Mm -hmm. Amen. People get offended when preachers talk about money. It's a good thing you know I don't do. So you think when I came here, I went to American Airlines and said, I am a servant of the Lord, shaba, 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 lava, ding, dong. I, I just spoke in tongues and I want to interpret. Give me a ticket. 
You think that works? Huh? I came, I had to rent a car to come here. Do you think I can go to the car rental and say, hey baby, hallelujah, hallelujah, I am a servant of the Most High. They said, no sir, credit card. <laughs> it's amazing to me, it's amazing to me how the hundreds go to the groceries, the fifties go to Macy's, and the fives and ones come to church. Something, no, 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 I'm not saying here, because I know this is a giving church, I'm not saying here. Yes, it is. I am saying something has to change. Yes, yes. If you want this woman to be a harvester and not just a maintainer, maintain the church, keep the people happy, forget the harvest. Something has to change. Amen. Before COVID-19 came, I was scheduled to go to Austria, Switzerland, London, South America, Indonesia, and Singapore. To preach canceled it i'll be doing that sometime later in the year because i'm full of faith but i ain't foolish that's right wisdom i want you to know please listen to brother bally our best days are ahead of us Amen. the latter glory will be than the the latter rain will be heavier than the corn are you hearing me? Amen. Amen. Because the former rain brings in the harvest. The latter rain reaps the harvest. So the outpouring of the power of God before the coming of the harvest, which is the wheat harvest, will be greater and more powerful and heavier. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Mm. Thank I am not happy that COVID-19 has come at all. I am grieved for the deaths. Do you know that Italy just surpassed China in deaths? Mm -hmm. Deaths surpassed mm -hmm. Italy. But when this is over, we'll be able to continue rocking the church yeah. and saying, do not let your apathy kick into gear again. Mm -hmm. If COVID didn't shake them, nothing Come will. Come on. Come on. So I have good news for you. We are a prepared people for a prepared time going to a prepared place. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. What an honor to be alive yes. in this time. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. So let me say these words with you before we pray together. Look out for your break in, your breakthrough, and your break out. Mm -hmm. mm. It's here. Somebody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Join us each week at the same time for Jesus is Lord. Until next week at the same time, this is Brother Ken Jones asking you, is Jesus your Lord? The river and the river is moving in